Hello, I'm Matchbox, and today I'm gonna do reaction because I'm tired, I'm in a pissy mood, and I want to watch a few videos, and I've got suggested this, let's say, a week old video about MMOs and Paradox, some kind of thing. I'm interested because I'm a big fan of MMOs. Okay, let's go. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. More yes. about them in a little bit. Pregnancy, war, MMORPGs. Don't scare me like that. What do these all have in common? They all require multiple people. But if <laughs> MMORPG multiplayer, why play MMORPG alone? This is a question philosophy. Because I'm very a social person, I'm afraid of new people even even on the internet. First dating back to ancient Greece have thought about for centuries and even years. And today the topic of playing MMOs solo is still a big point of discussion. I mean, just look at all the videos about it already made. Uh, luckily for you, I'm also going to make a video about it. Yes! In the recent past, we've seen tons of solo-oriented game modes added to MMORPGs, usually called solo self-found modes, where you can't group with people, you can't- I will say to you my opinion. I think people have less time in their lives to... to, to, to schedule uh, with friends or with uh, other people outside of their friend group and other priorities in life. That comes to the same point, in my opinion. And some people don't have friends. A lot of friends that uh, um, want to play video games or at least MMORPGs. Most of people around me uh, look me, look at me when I say that I uh, like to spend most of my time playing video games. Say, a little bit crazy. A social, yes, definitely. Can't trade with people. You have to earn everything yourself. RuneScape calls it Iron Man mode because. That's cooler. And while these solo challenge modes are a relatively new thing, solo play in an MMO kind of isn't. In the days of early MMORPGs before World of Warcraft, MMOs were largely EverQuest. unsoloable. EverQuest was a notoriously difficult and punishing game that really required grouping to make any sort of meaningful progress. The same goes for games like Anarchy Online with its sandbox style punishing open world PvP system. If you tried to tackle that game alone, you'd probably just die instantly. But with the release of World of Warcraft in 2004, Everything changed. He, mean, he means probably hardcore uh, old games. Lineage was like that, and then they they changed it. You could make significant progress on your character completely on your own. Almost every quest and early profession could be taken on without the help of anyone else. Something the genre had never seen before. I mean, RuneScape existed since 2001 and was also a game that you could solo in a lot of ways, but people always seem to forget it, so I'm just gonna forget it too, I guess? World of Warcraft, whether the devs knew it or not, legitimized a valid way to experience MMORPGs that made the genre more accessible than it had ever been. So let's let me explain why lately it's been a very bad thing for these games. I want to make one thing clear though. I love playing solo. I would say it's the primary way I experience MMORPGs. Solo players and solo content. Uh, also, people play MMOs for very different reasons. For example, I have a lot of people that play any type of game online strictly for PvP. Uh, I have friends that, if they play game, uh, that play strictly, if they play MMORPG, they play it for strictly PvE content. Others for exploring. Um, I have different sorts of people in my... Well, not, a fr not friends, but um, uh, let's just say... 
people with same affliction that are video games have a place in MMORPGs. My issue is with the way devs are handling this content. Either trying to outright stop people from playing solo or to cater to solo players a little too heavy handedly. Both of these sides lose sight of what makes solo play in an MMORPG great. I also think that solo MMOs are. Hello, idea. Sorry, guys, this is the manifestation of my internalized anxiety. What are you doing here? Oh. Married? Oh, that's great. What's World of Warships? Sorry, not to cut you off, but I think it might be easier if you just possess my body and then speak through me. <laughs> World of Warships is a free-to-play naval warfare simulation game available now on PC okay. and consoles, and they're also the sponsor of today's video. You can download World of Warships right now at the link in the description, and if you use promo code BRAVO at registration, you'll get a huge starter pack full of things like 500 doubloons, 1.5... Let's continue with the video. Five million credits, seven days of premium account access, and a free ship once you complete 10 battles. <sighs> oh man, dude, that actually sounds really cool. That's unpleasant. How about I talk about the rest of World of Warships and you don't possess my body. It actually really scares me when you do that. Honestly, dude, the coolest thing I'm seeing about World of Warships is the new content released every single month. I mean, that's wild. There's things like new ships, new cosmetics, and more, and it's all tied together with these state-of-the-art graphics with dynamic- I, I want sponsors too. I will sell myself out for any type of sponsorship. Agree, disagree, I will sell myself out. Weather, water textures that make the game look like the real deal. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Don't possess me. <laughs> Time to join the Discord and see what's going on in there. Ugh. Dude, when I ask you not to possess me, please don't possess me. Download World of Warships now at the link in the description. And don't forget to yeah. use code BRAVO to get all those free this goodies I talked happen. about earlier. This is really going to happen when he's... Oh, uh, when he has the possibility not to ask you, he will definitely listen to your Part opinions. Part one, why we play alone. It's important that we figure out why people even choose to play solo. We are a social creatures nowadays. Oh, in the first place, it's a topic that to this day confuses redditors and forum posters, and those are some of the smartest people in the world. Like I said before, this is a well-treaded topic on YouTube, but I keep coming back to this topic. And say to friends, show to friends that I farmed or made this weapon, armor, or whatever. Talk at GEC by prolific MMO game designer Damien Schubert. Damien's worked on games ranging from Meridian 59, the first ever 3D MMORPG. He's also worked on The Sims Online, which is one of the MMOs ever made. And at the time of the talk in 2011, he was the lead designer on Star Wars The Old Republic. Ever heard of it? <laughs> nope. You haven't? Oh, that's it's a it's an MMO. Now Damien spends his time on Twitter complaining about protesters and giving his opinion on rap beef by saying, you think Drake versus Kendrick is crazy? You should try listening to Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> In this talk called The Loner, Damien talks about why and what types of people play alone in a genre that's greatest selling point is the multiplayer aspect. One really great point he touches on early is that the ability to be a loner is a uniquely MMO experience. The whole concept of a loner is predicated on the existence of other players. That in and of itself is a reason someone might want to play solo. It's like making an out of the box build in an RPG and challenging yourself to complete the game. It's not a wrong way to play, it's a unique way to play. And it's a cool feeling even if you prefer playing alone to see other real people running around playing the same game as you. You can play solo and still feel like you're a part of the community. This yes. type of player is one Damien describes as the soloer, a player who is either challenging themselves or just enjoys the MMORPG for what it is. They enjoy grinding and questing and leveling and for them participating in that experience with other players isn't that important. This is sometimes uh, other people are just in the way. If there is a story, if there's uh, some kind of interesting quest, some people are just 
going through, clicking next, 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 uh, not letting me to read something, uh, hurrying me up. I, I have that kind of one friend that does this. Hurry up, hurry up. Fuck. I want to enjoy. I want to read the story. I want to immerse myself. But no, I have that one guy that does this. Hurry up. Why so slow? You're holding the whole party. We are too. Okay. It's just one of 10 types of loners Damien talks about in his talk. But if I went through all of them, I'd have to put subway surfers on the screen to keep your attention. And I'm not willing to do that. Plus some of the types of players he talks about are just like, I don't want to call them wrong, but they're just like, interesting no i'm not putting subway surfers back on the screen the first player damien touches on is the new player new players i think are the best example of a forgotten type of solo players these aren't people who are necessarily choosing to play solo or they might not even be people who want to play solo but when you start a new game especially an mmo there's a lot going on and a lot to take in if a game has the ability to be so most of the time i am that guy soloing just because i'm a new player in the game load early on so that new players can take their time learn the abilities feel out how the game mechanics work and all around get their feet under them they'll be a lot more prepared and willing to do group content in the future this comfort is also a lot more likely to retain players because while boring a new player is seen as the cardinal sin of game design overwhelming them is just as bad and other players are extremely overwhelming the comments on the talk which i think are super valuable in and of themselves say as much other players when you're trying to take your time and learn about the game or the lore often just get in the way wait did i just call a comment section valuable Th that can't be right let me find one that's absolutely worthless this guy swallowing heavily in the microphone wait, is valuable. What that, Th that can't be right the lore often Let's not forget that uh, I, it's hard for me to follow the idea when I see the text on the screen and somebody is reading it. It's hard for me to follow both or some of it. I don't know. Maybe it's a some kind of disorder. I don't give a fuck. But hey, let me do this. Let's not forget that you get to start a new MMO. You're excited by all the abilities and skills your character is going to uh, character is going to try out then you're met with people who tell you that you can only play one way and only use certain skills yes i'm always that called meta meta i hate meta because i want to find my own way how to play the game often just get in the way Wait, did I just call a comment section valuable? Th that can't be right. Let me find one that's absolutely worthless. This guy swallowing heavily in the microphone is the thing I'll remember most of this conference. Ah. That's pretty worthless, but I mean, yeah. he has a point. Vacationer? Damien, drink some water! The last type of person Damien identifies that I want to talk about is what he calls the lunch at your desk type. He just means grown-ups. Hey, Future Idol here. I'm being really mean to Damien right now. It's a good talk. I don't know why I was so rude to him. Over the years, the average MMO player has gotten older, which despite sounding like a stupidly obvious statement is also true. Like back in the day, there were a bunch of teenagers and people in their early 20s and literal children running around these games. Dude, the, 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 the MMOs started somewhere in that age group so that's normal that uh, people that started to play mmos are younger because old people don't give a fuck about mmos or uh, old games of their time my my father used to play mario and hell i like to watch that but today, you're not going to find very many children at all on MMORPGs. That's why the Minecraft YouTubers won't log on. The average MMO player today is much more likely to be a 30-year-old with a full-time job and potentially even a kid or two. And when you have that much real-world responsibility filling up your schedule, it can be hard to find an uninterrupted two or three hours to do a raid or a group questing session. I mean, hell, it could even be hard to find a 45-minute period to do a dungeon run. And even if these types of players do find like three hours to play the game uninterrupted, their social battery might be so drained that they really value the time to just play on their own. 
just to relax, just to grind, just to have fun and not to be bothered by uh, some... It's a risk. It's a risk because there's a risk playing any type of social game, uh, MMOs, uh, well, even MOBA, League of Legends. You meet people that drain you. And especially if you trying to relax after day's work, going home, spend two hours to turn off your brain and not to interact with anyone, especially when your job requires that, to interact with other people. That will exhaust every everything and you're gonna be and you're gonna go cuckoo. Grown-ups are busy people, and they're also just all-around worse, like the all-grown-up TV show. It was worse than Rugrats. That's my- that's like the whole point. That- that's the video I said. There are obviously a ton of other reasons someone might prefer to or even need to play solo in an MMO, and Damien's talk does a good job of touching on a lot of those, so I'd highly recommend watching it. I just felt the need to add this section to defend people like me who get told we're a paradox for playing an MMO mostly or entirely alone. But if I'm saying all of this to support solo-style play, what's with the title of the video? Well, um... That, that's because of the thing that's about to pop up on the screen. Part two, fixing so... <laughs> I can't, can't do an accent. As I've said multiple times in this video, the persistent multiplayer worlds of MMORPGs are their most unique and greatest selling point. There's a very good reason for MMOs to try their best to steer into group content. The content that takes up the most design... To the problem in this, that most MMOs... Uh have the problem that they are try uh, when they start they are they have more freedom in my opinion when they go on at least those MMOs that I used to play when they came out and uh, through the years they progressed they became a little bit more uh stricter with the Blah, blah, blah. I try to say very difficult, in very difficult way, very simple things. Uh, it's try, uh, creators of uh, developers try to put players in boxes to dictate how they are supposed to play things and uh most players uh, giving up uh, giving up to that and that's a big problem there uh, in time in any m mmo i notice that there when the game progresses there's less freedom i mean through the time more expansions more patches more whatever the balancing uh destroys every type of freedom in the game mo in my experience and uh, players don't help with that, uh, as the, it was said in the video that uh, players in the party, when they uh, are trying to go raid or something, uh, require you to use certain skills, certain builds to be useful. And that's because nobody is addressing overpowered meta builds, in my opinion, and that's putting player in the box development and QA time in any MMO is multiplayer content. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face saying QA. I know these guys aren't testing their games. Raids, dungeons, elite quests, or heroic quests, or whatever you want to call your special quests, fates, etc. Tons of examples of content that require or strongly encourage having a group. And a lot of this content is seen as the highlight of the game by the community that plays it. Multiplayer content also has the added benefit of being one of the best ways to convert casual players into hardcore players. This is something else that Damien brings up in his GDC talk. Every player starts off as a casual player, but over time and at their own pace, if everything goes well... This uh, Right now, this feels like, like I'm reacting to a guy that is reacting to video. Oh, I was hoping I will never do such a thing, but here we are. They'll drift closer and closer to being a hardcore player. And the goal for every MMO is to get casual players 
to being hardcore players. Multiplayer content being the best way to create hardcore players isn't really surprising. When you look at a ton of end game content, which tends to be the multiplayer content, it all lives down here on the spectrum. And if you do enough multiplayer content, you'll start to form social bonds with other players. And there's no better way to get people connected to a game than for them to have actual relationships formed through that game. I'm sure we all have friends that we met on our favorite MMORPGs from our childhood that we either still talk to or at the very least still think about every so often. I'd like to quickly apologize also, if you're an active MMO player, I did not mean to put you on a second spectrum. Anyway, game designers really want to make sure they can get as many people to this multiplayer content as possible, and that means they have to fix solo players. I mean, these players aren't doing dungeons, they're not raiding, they haven't joined a guild, they didn't even join the server's Discord channels to say a slur. Are they even playing an MMO? To fix these players, MMOs will sometimes create roadblocks in main storylines or character progression that cannot be advanced unless you participate in a group activity. Diablo Immortal does this by having As I said, putting in the box. Requiring something that players don't want to do. In my opinion, so, uh, most of the time they're just losing play, uh, just destroying the player base. They're losing players. If if they creating some kind of roadblock or 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 requirement, let's say, that's not really good idea. Literal dungeons that you need to be in a group in, and they are required for the main story. And don't tell me Diablo Immortals not an MMORPG because. Blizzard can't seem to figure out that Diablo was never meant to be one, even though they keep treating it like one. Like, why was Diablo 3 always online? Why is Diablo 4 just a lightweight MMO? They're not MMOs. Stop it. Sorry, this isn't supposed to be a video I say about Diablo, unless you'd want me to do that. They are... I'm, I think I was talking about uh, that um, most of the terms these days don't mean shit because people keep broadening every term that is great what is mmo what is rpg what is mmorpg what is pay to win uh, what is not pay to win pick a lane for fuck's sake i don't know i don't know i'm trying to have a fair discussion on these topics but uh, that's not that easy. Just stop, stop making everything relative through the not through um, to the players. I mean, yeah, I understand that players should have opinions. What is, uh, let's say, uh, MMO? What is uh, RPG? But uh, there should be strict standard for these type of things. Diablo Immortal, in my opinion, and what I've read, the description, it's not an MMO. It is an RPG, a symmetrical, top-down RPG, but co-op with PvP. But it's not MMO. <laughs> that even real mm I, I, i'm getting frustrated somehow eh, i'm irritable i mean i'm easy to irritate today mos like Ooh. final fantasy 14 with its story dungeons for some degree of multiplayer on you the problem with this design paradigm isn't even that it gets in the way of solo players experience forcing them to do something they don't want to do it's that it doesn't even accomplish the goal these devs are hoping it does social bonds are a fast track to creating hardcore players but throwing players together in a dungeon that uses a group finder tool anyway so they can clear Bo making uh, casual players to um, creating uh, hardcore players from casual players it's you are making them to socialize give time if they want to do that they will do let it it should be not uh, it shouldn't be mandatory it should be 
it should progress naturally these types of things in my opinion clear it super fast without ever saying a word to each other is not social this article from andy mcadams back in 2020 says and yet it is not bad it's not bad you go into the raid which most of the time in most of the games you are doing multiple times in a week multiple times in a month and you're just going just going like to to work you're doing instant you don't want to spend time uh, interacting with others much but in more detail and better written despite the fact that he uses a the dictionary defines social as line which is not great andy let's be honest andy does do a great job of diving into how social bonds are formed and what makes them meaningful and comes to the conclusion that you very rarely meet a new friend because you were forced to group with them on a project these changes all attempt to fix the key word is forced that's now how it should work on things that um, we spend our free time. If it doesn't give you pleasure, don't do that. Don't spend your spare time, your free time on things that don't give you pleasure. If fix a type of player that isn't broken. Some players just want to play solo. Others will seek out the multiplayer content if you did a good job designing it and designing meaningful but not forceful incentives to participate in it. Forcing them to change how they play the game isn't converting them into a hardcore player. It's converting them into a different game. I'm not trying to say there shouldn't yes! be efforts made to break solo play. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. You're just removing new players removing other players old players when you are doing stuff like that you're forcing things on people and they will go to other games and your game will die and some people like your game but you are destroying it yourself like most of the time developers are doing these days if there's a good old mmo with through time progression of the game new updates new shit they're not listening to players they're just doing shit knows for what and they're destroying their game like that players out of their shell but forcing them into group content is just not the way to do that and hey i see you other mmos who are bragging about catering to solo players with your content updates you think you're off the hook on this one right you think so <laughs> oh god I just farted. part three fixing solo play because part two was fixing solo players so I, this is the same but it's like a th it's like a theme solo players don't need to be fixed there's nothing wrong with us but you know what else doesn't need to be fixed Solo play! Some MMOs have correctly identified that a strong solo player base is almost as, if not just as, important as a strong social player base. For that reason, they've made sure to cater new updates to solo players either exclusively or in addition to the standard multiplayer crowd. This is a great thing to do if you're planning a new leveling zone or continent or quest line. Having interesting multiplayer content but making sure there's plenty to do as a solo player as well is great game design that has been done for decades in the genre at this point universal game not focusing on one thing multiplayer is not supposed to be like this in my opinion of course why am i keep saying that everybody's supposed to know that it is my opinion right kitty right 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 hello mr kitty it's a she ew why you are wet you were drooling. You were sleeping and drooling. Why? Why are you going through this place? Why are you going through my legs? God damn you. Furball. Okay. The problem comes up when the line blurs between multiplayer and solo content. The best example of this, in my opinion, is Old School RuneScape. Back in 2017, Old School RuneScape got a new piece of content called Raids, and it was touted as the first ever piece of content that really required other players to get best in slot loot. I mean that with all due respect to the Calphite Queen and to the King Black Dragon, 
Uh, by 2017, they were both soloable and also irrelevant. Eventually, players did find out how to solo this raid, and it's now a very popular thing to do, but it took some time, and it's still decently difficult. But with the next raid... Yeah, pe people will find a way that is really possible. That's how MMOs work. People trying to do everything... Loot! Everybody are... Everybody is greedy! Are greedy! Everybody wants loot to go to them! If there's a possibility, they will find the way. That's supposed to happen, in my opinion. If not, then create a raid boss that is more powerful. In the Theater of Blood, the Old School RuneScape team really set out to make the hardest raid yet, and also one that would not be soloable. And while Theater of Blood yet, has make been solo before, it's very, very few players who have ever done it, and it requires a ton of skill and time. Theater of Blood stands as the only piece of content that you're really gonna need to group up with other players to do if you want the loot from it. But with the third raid is when we got an interesting design shift from Jagex, the creators of Old School RuneScape. This third raid, called Tombs of a Masket, featured variable difficulty through the invocation system, meaning you could choose what mechanics bosses did and didn't have to make the raid as hard as you wanted to make it. Obviously, this comes with changes in how common loot drops are and what the best drops you can get are. But something else they did that I thought was really weird is that they actually put design considerations in the raid for if you entered solo. Things like making certain rooms just faster to complete if you're alone. If I understand this guy, uh, plays most at least it he used to play a lot of runescape a lot of it not usual amount then let's say 100 or 200 hours that's um his main game at least used to be right right probably so the variable difficulty combined with these design considerations means that solo was and is a completely viable way to do this raid, and in some cases it can even be optimal. Is it really the end of the world to have a solo option for a piece of content like this? No, not really. But I do think it adds a lot to an MMORPG to have parts that are designed specifically and exclusively for groups. So it is in my yeah, it is a great idea when game uh, has a raid instant zone where's, where there is multiple difficulties and uh, that where you can uh, uh, cha change something with raid boss uh, abilities or whatever mechanics. That's interesting. Never saw that. Maybe I'm just... Uh, I need more experience, probably. But yet, that that is a great idea. Different difficulties, and let's say, uh, easy, medium, hard, let's say, up until hard it is possible to solo it, and uh, hard to very hard, hardcore, or whatever. Uh, requires more and more players, and uh, maybe they're... Uh, there some kind of mechanic that is not possible to do solo, for example. Or maybe uh, some of it is the problem uh, that some of the raids uh, in time become a so uh, solo. It is possible to solo them uh, becomes possibility uh, that um, power creep maybe some of it uh, some kind of limitation maybe should be in place uh, uh, on those raid bosses for example level or gear some kind of gear score or whatever that uh, stronger players higher level players uh, couldn't participate in that because uh, it's kind of ru ruining experience some of you might be thinking that locking the best items behind group content is an example of forced multiplayer, like I talked about in part 2, but I don't think it is. In vanilla World of Warcraft, you can level from 1 to 60 completely on your own, comfortably, and have a- Best gear, uh, locking, uh, by the group content, it's not that bad if, if, in my opinion, if, 
uh, it is possible to trade items. If uh, I mean for cur uh, for game cur in game currency, uh, I'm kind of annoyed and disappointed in uh, MMOs these days that uh, items are not tradable. Armors, weapons, uh, most of them are created without this mechanic, which I'm disappointed because I like trading, I like crafting and selling my stuff or some kind of economy in the game. That's what I'm missing in some of these games. A great time doing it. Along the way, though, with the elite quests and dungeons you'd and have... Of course, then uh, I, for I forgot to say that. Uh, and of course... Uh, since you can farm uh, le uh, lesser items, uh, you can trade them for gold, for example, and then buy uh, a higher level items uh, that are farmed. Uh, that's a possibility that are farmed in group raids or just go with the group and try to get those items. Leave this possibility. Or after the raid, trade items, whatever. But let people trade items. And even that, uh, the, the fact that uh, some of the old games had the possibility to trade items, uh, sell them or whatever. Uh, inst um, installed, uh, made uh, the... the Items like bound to account, bound to player, bind to uh, to to um, character, which, in my opinion, is kind of bullshit. Why why, why make uh, such items? You cannot you uh, it dropped to carry it uh, to equip it. You have to bind it to yourself you cannot after that you cannot trade you cannot uh, you cannot give it to other players i don't like this type of mechanic and this kind of ruins the economy ruins the experience that uh, was previously very important and useful and uh, binded or or whatever item that is locked to my character I, I don't think it's supposed to exist like this in my in my opinion yet again okay skipped you'd be missing out on some of the best gear in the game for leveling the difference there is that solo play is viable but it's not optimal. Content that can be soloed exists throughout the game, but having group content that is extremely worth doing but not strictly speaking required is a really good thing. Like I said already, I'm a solo player and when it came time to do my first dead mines in World of Warcraft Classic, I was dreading it. I hate talking to other people, and I especially hate letting those people down and having them flame me in chat. I don't know why, but it scares me. But I really wanted the Cruel Barb from Edwin Van Cleef, and I especially wanted the Tunic of Westfall from the quest line that ended in the Dead Mines. And if I really wanted that stuff, I had to just bite the bullet and put myself in a social situation. And what ended up happening is I had a ton of fun. A lot of that fun came from the fact that we had to organize our group through an actual chat system, meaning we had to actually send at least one message to each other. And once you send one message, it gets a lot easier to send a bunch more. So you start joking around with these people. At least you, uh, uh, you could uh, overcome that. Uh, I don't get why, why this is an obstacle to talk to other people, but still, I'm a, myself a... a most of the time, solo a solo player, but uh, but I have my reasons that I explained previously in this the same video. Uh, but 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 uh, I kind of don't see a problem uh, to talk to other people most of the time. But uh, if I experience a little bit flaming, a little bit that uh, that probably w will kill my my good mood for the moment. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. I understand what the... But at the same time, I don't get it. Uh, this is not the... 
bad thing that they're making uh, if you want to progress you have to a uh, few times in your playthrough uh, interact with other people it's not bad it's a uh, part of the game i understand that and i'm okay with that somehow i feel i'm just uh, uh, trying to talk about obvious th obvious things and just filling the 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 how's it say, uh, the saying goes um, uh, trying to fill an uh, holy jar I mean with holes whatever that's a uh, old Lithuanian saying or Russian saying I don't uh, I'm not sure but still let's go. Or one of them turns out to be role playing, and that's fun. I have had some bad experiences in. To, uh, if <laughs> that's a risk, I agree. To to be flamed, to be to have a bad experience talking with other people, but still, still, uh, you can find different people with different ideas in that as said role players uh, role playing players or 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 idea suggestions different things interaction dungeon. interaction but also is a lot of my favorite experiences are from grouping up with other people for these dungeons or for the quests or for even raids it's the one time i get to experience the truly exclusive thing an mmorpg can offer me and all that happened not because i was forced to do it but because i was sufficiently tempted by good design to do it i still to this day play world of warcraft primarily solo it's how i like to level but I really love getting the chance to break that up with some group content that just feels good and feels natural. So the question becomes, how do we get more of that? Part four. We literally already figured that out. It's like, what are you doing here, guys? Making solo play fun without making it required or hindering the multiplayer aspect of MMOs is a solved problem. RuneScape solved it. Guild Wars 2 solved it. World of Warcraft solved it. For some reason, these games, old and new, are now trying to force themselves to either be entirely soloable or entirely multiplayer. Solo and multiplayer are not at odds with each other. They're not harming each other. They can and have existed in MMOs for decades. Devs should absolutely continue to consider solo players when designing new content, but they should also remember when multiplayer content fits in best. They're designing an MMO. You'd be stupid to ignore the M. The analogy I made before about making a bad build in an RPG is exactly how solo play should be viewed. A bad build doesn't need to be balanced and made as good as all the other builds in the game. What's important is that a player who chooses a suboptimal build can enjoy the game and even get to the end of it, even if that means they'll do it slowly. As long as it's fun, it's okay. So for the love of God, stop forcing me to play in a group to advance your main storyline. I'll group if I want to or if you've tempted me enough. Until then, I'm just gonna blast the Sonic Frontier soundtrack and kill 25 goblins like a good little gamer boy. Thank you again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link no! in the description to try it out. And when you register your account, use code BRAVO for tons of free things like 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium access, and a free ship after you complete 10 battles. Hey, you're a patron. Kendall, I like this creator. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> Has a very, very likable sense of humor. Especially with this photo. Haba haba. Okay, I think there's uh there's no need for some kind of outro for for me for this video. I explain myself quite perfectly. I hope, and uh, yeah. And you probably understood that I agree with uh, with the, this video and 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 uh, what was explained in this, and we have a lot of problems with the MMOs these days. Uh, most of them are very disappointing, and uh, all the MMOs are are going very very bad path. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I'll see you soon in the next one. I've been Magibox. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.